Okay, so <clears throat> this is a video of me explaining the virus logic game from practice test 79. It's the fourth logic game and uh, understandably the most difficult one. Um, this is what we've learned to be a what they call a rogue game because it doesn't uh, fit the kind of classic conventions of the typical grouping, ordering, um, and the hybrid style games. Um, I, when I first did this one, I thought it was really, really fun and unique. And uh, I didn't do super well my first time through under time constraints, but then my second time through, I uh, discovered some, some really fun tricks that made the game really easy once I just got the second chance to look at it. Um, <clears throat> now you guys have the, um, I sent you guys the picture of the questions and so I won't show that. Um, I'll just show my work on how I chose to diagram and work my way through the questions. <clears throat> so we're told that there are exactly six computers, P, Q, R, S, T, and U. Exactly one of those computers was infected by a virus from the outside. So one outside, and then the, that virus was then transmitted between computers on the network. Each computer received the virus exactly once, so I just wrote infected once. The following pieces of information concerning the spread of the virus have been established. So the first uh, rule is that no computer transmitted the virus to more than two other computers on the network. So I wrote question mark with two branches and wrote max two infections. And again, this is not how, you know, th this type of like notation is not diagramming. It's not the type of diagramming you'd see taught in like prep books or courses because it, this is kind of an unusual game. And when you are faced with an unusual game, you're not going to be able to apply a lot of the diagramming conventions that you do to the classic grouping ordering hybrid games. <clears throat> so this is just how I made sense of it. Uh, the next rule is that S transmitted the virus to exactly one other computer on the network. And so I drew S to a question mark, S infects one, Next, we have the computer that transmitted the virus to R also transmitted to S. So whoever transmitted it to R also transmitted it to S. And I kind of combined these rules here to show that S, um, you know, still has its one infection after. And next we get a set of either or rules. So we have either R or T transmitted to Q. So I wrote we either have RQ or TQ for the first set of either ors and then we have either T or U transmitted the virus to P. So we have T, P or U, P. So let's go ahead and jump into the questions with this. Actually, no, sorry, no, we don't need to jump in the questions because uh, first we want to see, we want to take that pause before we jump into the questions to see if we can combine any rules or what we can infer based on these. <clears throat> and there's one major inference that kind of, if you don't make, makes the rest of it much more difficult. Um, but it's a pretty simple one if you just think. So it, you just want to start thinking about what computer can be infected from the outside. Because we know that there are a lot of computers that are infected from inside the network. R is inside the network, S is inside the network, Q is inside the network, and P is inside the network because they all have to be infected by another computer. So that means that the initial infected PC can either be T 
or you. Right? And now we need to think about what S can connect with. Because we know that S has one, but we know that S, so let's just, we're trying to figure out, we know that S cannot infect Q. We know that S cannot infect P. We know that S cannot infect R. Oh, R. We know it can infect itself. So since it can infect Q, it can infect P, and it can infect R, and it can infect itself, then that means that S either infects T or U. So T or U are always going to be either infected by S or the initial PC infected in the network. And this, like inference made here, um, which you can easily blow by, like when you're under time constraints, like this is the last game, you want to write out your rules and get right into the questions, but even on like a, uh, the last game with time crunch, take you the time to just realize, well, hey, Q can't be first, P can't be first, S and R can't be first, and it, it like helps, it like will double your time on this, on this game. Just by taking 15 seconds to figure that out, you save well over 15 seconds in the long run. So let's look at 18. One possible route of the virus from the first computer in the network infected to Q. And so this is a pretty standard you know, orientation question. So option A is R, P, T, Q. Option B is T, S, R, Q. Option C is T, S, U, Q. Option D is U, P, R, Q. And option E is U, T, P, R, Q. Now the best way to go about these ones that I found is you literally you take a rule and then you cross check that rule um, against the answer choices real quick. And it, it lets you go through all of the questions like very easily to eliminate the wrong ones because we know that four out of five of these are going to break our rules. Um, the first two rules we don't want to look at because None of these are transmitting to two, and all of these with S have S transmitting to one. So the next rule, the computer that transmitted the virus to R also transmitted it to S. So we know that if S and R are connected like this, that that can't work because they have to come from the same. Um, that's the only one where that is relevant. Because you could have here, so this is one possible root. You could have T, S, U, Q. R is not mentioned, so in theory, T, R could be coming off of that T. Let's go to the next uh, condition. Um, either R or T transmitted to Q. So we, so we go through and look at what Q is. So A, T to Q, that's fine. C, U to Q, not fine, eliminated. R, Q, R, Q, good. Next rule, either T or U transmitted to P. So we look at P, oh, A is done. Either, to, and then here, D, E, we've got T, P, and U, P, so those look good. And then this is where you, these two, like picking between these two is a little bit, uh, trickier because the rule that you're using to eliminate the wrong answer left between these two is a little bit, you have to think a little bit outside the box. Um, the key thing here is, so you look at this, this doesn't break any rules, looks good, so you leave it. Now we need to see this one, U to T to P to R to Q. Okay, so that means that 
if P is, so these doesn't seem to break any of the rules so far. We know that if P connects to R though, P also connects to S, but then that uses up all six of our elements, meaning that S cannot infect one other computer, breaking the game, answer D. Let's go to 19. Which one of the following could be the computer that was infected from the outside? So this we already know because we made this inference up first. Um, although if you didn't make that inference up first, hopefully this question uh, will prompt you to kind of figure that out really quick because it's just asking that same question, what can be infected? And you realize, looking back quickly, S and R are out because they're infected by another computer. Q and P are out because they're infected by another computer and therefore the answer is T. If you realized it was TU, you didn't have to go back and do that. Um, let's look at question 20. If T did not transmit the virus to any other computer, on the network. Which of the following must be true? And we're given the option PS, QR, US, P transmits to no one, and R transmits to no one. So this is a conditional, so it's nice to go ahead and redraw a little bit of your diagram here. So T did not, so this is if T is terminal. Well, if T is terminal, we know where it's terminal. Because if it's the initial PC, it can't be terminal, so therefore we have ST and nothing else after. And then we can go ahead and draw in that we know R and S, so I just put them stacked because they're going to be coming from the same. Don't know quite what it is yet. And we know that U comes first. So next, we need to try and like realize what we can fill in here. So since we know that t we're told that T is terminal, meaning T can't transmit to P, which means U has to transmit to P. And since T is terminal, we know that T can't transmit to Q. So we know that R has to transmit to Q, meaning that this is the connection that has to be true. This is the only way um, the game can be if T is a terminal. So now we just look back at our rules. P to S, is that there? Yes. Boom. And then we can just quickly, Q obviously does not go to R, U obviously does not go to S, P obviously infects others, and R obviously infects others. <clears throat> Let's look at 21. Now 21 I think is the most difficult one on here. Um, any of the following computers could have transmitted the virus to two other computers on the network, except, so we're looking for the computer that under no circumstances can transmit to two other computers. So we can already go ahead, so A, so A is P, B is Q, C is R, D is T, and E is U. So we can go ahead and eliminate A right off the bat because we know that P, based on our last question here, we know that P can transmit to, to R and S. Um, we know that S can't transmit to two others, so, uh, but it's not an option, so it doesn't matter. Um, and so now we need to go through here and, and kind of think about what the best way to test these are. 
because um, you're kind of thinking, well, there, there's really nothing that's obvious in the rules that's like, oh, you know, one of these can't transmit to two others. So you kind of want to triage here for your testing. Um, and this is one that I kind of just brute forced, but you can brute force it intelligently by thinking in which ones you want to look at first. Um, now, we're told nothing about Q's connections to others. We're told about things that connect to Q, but nothing about what Q infects. So that implies, kind of made me think that Q doesn't have a lot of restrictions on who it can transmit to, so it seems reasonable that, you know, it could transmit twice. Whereas if you look at R, T, and U, we have rules that govern who R and T and U can uh, contribute to. Now T, T has rules where it's either TQ and then TP. So we have two rules governing who T transmits to. So that seems to be like the logical place to start because T has the most restrictions on who it can contribute to, which would imply that, um, you know, it may not be able to transmit to more than two others. Because if it's transmitting to two others, maybe it's breaking one of these strict rules on who it can transmit to. Um, at least that's how I was thinking. Um, so I go ahead and draw out a T transmitting to two others. So we know that if T is transmitting to two others, that it's not the one that goes after S. So we know that we have an SU. And then we know, so we now, we, now we've dealt with three of our, and f so four, because R, whatever comes here is going to be, um, you know, connected to both R and S. So let's go ahead and do T. So we know that T has to transmit, let's go ahead and say TQ, because that's one of the rules. And then TP here, which would be the last remaining one. Is this a pos is this a, does this break the game? Yes. No. No, it doesn't. Um, we've got TQ and TP, so we're set on that rule. We have S transmitting to one other. We've got R and S infected by the same. So T obviously can successfully infect two other computers. Next in my triage was R. So let's go ahead and do R. And we know that whatever infected R also infected S. Now what you'll see here is that this forces five out of our six slots, right? We have R, one, two, S, we have three here. And then R is infecting two, so that's five. And it actually forces all six of our slots because S has to uh, transmit one. So we know that in the three spot, we have UT. And here we have UT. So in neither of the, and then one of these has to be P. And then, so this is PQ. So as you can see, this clearly breaks the rule because neither T nor U are transmitting to P. So R cannot do two. Now, when I was looking back on this, I realized that R would have been even smarter than T to test because of this fact, like when I realized, so if R is transmitting twice, but we know that whatever is connected to R infects S, then that takes up, like I should have seen really quick that that takes up the entire frame. You know, that's, it, it forces all six positions, um, more so than T, even though we have this like convenient rule that like 
T has to give to two things. You know, why not just test that two things? And then you see it's pretty quick. So anyway, um, 22. 22 was another challenging one. Um, question reads, the spread of the virus among the computers is completely determined if which one of the following is true. We have R to Q, T to Q, T to S, U to P, and U to R. Now, so given one of these, the, the entire um, pattern spread of the virus is determined. So it's kind of, you know, it, it suggests that the only way to do this is to kind of brute force it, you know, plug these in, see what you can build around it and see if they're determined. Um, so you want to kind of triage and look at ones that, you know, like nail down positions a little bit more. Like if we know that it's RQ, then we don't really know much else, right? We wouldn't be able to know what comes first or last. This would tell us nothing of, you know, so just for example, like, so you want to look for the ones here that will dictate the position more clearly. And it's these two, C and E, that are the first two to test. For the same reason that, you know, we've just talked about R and how that nailed down positions here. We know that whatever transmits to S or R also transmits to S or R. So these are like the most logical ones to test because they nail down the positions. We know that if U transmits to R, it also transmits to S. And then we know that U is the initial one. Um, we know that S transmits to T. And now we're left with P and Q. Now we know that we can have TP or UP, but U is used up, so we have TP here. And now the last rule is that we have Q, and Q can come from either R or T. So we could have RQ like that, or we could have TQ like that. That doesn't break the rules either. So we have two options when U transmits to R. So that means that the uh, spread of the virus is not completely determined. So we can eliminate E. The next one to test is the TS connection. So we know that T transmits to S and therefore T also transmits to R. S transmits to U then because we know that it's either UT here, UT there. And now we're left again with P and Q. Uh, we know that Q has to come from either T or R, since T is already infecting two others. We know that this has to be RQ. We know that P has to come from either T or U. T is infecting two others, therefore P comes from U. This is the only possibility for when T infects S. So C is our answer. Finally, let's look at question 23. If P is the only computer that transmitted the virus to two other computers on the network, which of the following must be true? So here's our, uh, we're getting a new conditional. So we're told that P is the only one that infects two others. Now we know immediately based on the rules what P infects, right? Because we know that whatever infects S also has to infect R and vice versa. And if P is the only one that can infect two, then we know that we have this PRS chunk. Let me write in the answers here. So A is S to T, this is T to P, Q does not transmit to anyone, R does not transmit to anyone, and U does not transmit to anyone. So if this is true, which one of these must be true? So we know that P can't be first. 
we're going to have Tu here, and we're going to have Tu here. That leaves Q as our option. Now, where do, if we're going to have to place our Q, we have to place it either off of the R or off of a T. So our first option is we can leave the TUs just kind of up in the air here and put the Q in there. So no matter where T or U go, this is a possibility. The other possibility is that we, so now, so that's the only way it can come off of R and the, now we need to draw, there's two more, T can, Q can come off of T and T can go in two places. So we can quickly draw in the frames. So there's where T comes first. And then there's where T comes last. And we know that we have to place the Q off of T. So these three are the only three infection patterns if P is the only one that infects twice. So now we need to look and see what our diagram tells us, or our, our three frames here. S infects T, does that have to be true? No, because in this one, S infects U. T infects P, does that have to be true? Nope, because here we have U infecting P. Q does not infect anyone else. That is true. R does not infect anyone else. Well, we know that's not true. It's infecting Q there. And U does not infect anyone else. We know that's not true. It's infecting there. And therefore, C is our answer. Um, so this was my long-winded explanation of the virus game. Uh, and I hope that it helps some people learn uh, a little bit more about how to think through this type of game.